Are y'all sit over here? It'll look more like I'm looking at the king. Oh, okay. <clears throat> you want us to get in the middle? Yeah. If you would. In front? Yeah, yeah you'll, hit that, you'll hit that thing here if Amen. you want to get up here. I'll get up there. Amen. We'll be right over. Right row. Praise the Lord. Oh. Good news. I checked this morning. God's still on the throne. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Amen. Just in case you were wondering. <laughs> He's doing well. Still on the throne. Amen. Uh, we have some awesome things to talk about today that the Spirit of God's really been bringing up, which is leading up to, uh, we're going to do a complete, thorough undergoing of the Holy Spirit. Um, I'm almost completed with the workbook, um, just editing it now. It's about 100 pages long. And uh, I think it's going to be beneficial to everybody. Help me going back through it again. Um, you start seeing things, you go, well, there's a little bit more to that now. You know, so... Um, when the workbook's 100 pages long, the teaching would be five, 600 pages long. So uh, it's going to be really good, I believe, some of the things that God's wanting us to focus on about the Spirit, what He's doing, who He is. And the more we become acquainted with who He is, we'll become better acquainted with who we are. So uh, today we're going to uh, start out uh, this session to... Uh, this thing, come on now, be nice. With a blank page now. Amen. Now this should be picked up on the video as well. In Genesis chapter 22, 1, there's an incredible story about Abraham. Leads us up to where we are, the things that God's doing, uh, why we are who we are today. Vitally important because the enemy will wrestle you on the foundation of your ability or your right to stand on authority, to stand in power or anything else. So... It's good to have that any background stuff solidified in your life, but it all points to things that's happening today. It relates to everything that has to do with our life. It's really pretty incredible. Mm -hmm. But let's pray. Father, we bless you. Thank you for this awesome day that you've made. Thank you for everybody that's here, everybody that's with us, CD, DVD, Internet, whatever it is, Father. We just send blessings to them. And thank you, Lord, that you are working in us to perform and to do of your own good will. So Lord, we yield to you. Have your way with us today. Help us to hear what you're saying, believe what you're saying, and let it sink down into our being so it becomes a part of us that we see the absolute expression and manifestation of your living word in and through our lives. And we bless you. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Uh, in Genesis chapter 22, 1, uh, this tells a story about Abraham and Isaac. Very important. The thing to remember is that Abraham didn't start out there. Abraham already had a lot of background with God, a lot of experience, a lot of time. If you remember, he got Ishmael before he got Isaac. I mean, he waited years and years to get Ishmael and then uh, went into his handmaid, Hagar, and had Ishmael. And God said, that's not the promise. So he had to wait years again. And then here come Isaac, the promise. So Abraham had a long history with God. Uh, God giving him blessing, God giving him promises. And they had a working relationship way before it got to this point here. Uh, and, the, and I want you to begin to uh, really hear what the Spirit is saying in relation to maybe things in your life. Things in our life, things that have maybe of the past, things of the present or something that might be coming up. But I believe that God has a message in this that's going to really bless us all. And it came to pass after these things, Genesis 22, 1, that God did tempt Abraham. Now that's not tempt like the devil would tempt you. It literally means testing. He wanted to reveal and show what was in Abraham's heart. Now we know at the end of this thing, God gave him an incredible blessing. So... When we begin looking and appealing to God for things in our life, you may want to know that the validity of your desires may be challenged, may be tested. Are you in this just for you, or are you actually in this to honor God? Are you in this just to get some relief, or are you in this because there's a manifestation of Christ in your life that's allowing you to bear up under anything? Amen. 
So here he says that uh, God, after these things, he had, Abraham had actually been with Abimelech and they were wrestling over a well and he ended up giving seven ewe lambs to Abimelech and saying, Abimelech, this is going to be a sign to you and a testimony to me. I dug this well. This well belongs to me. And they named it Beersheba, which Beersheba means the well of oath. The well of oath. Now, the well of oath actually means the place where the word springs forth. That's pretty good. Amen. <laughs> pretty good stuff. So, and that's the place where Abraham stayed. And then Abraham was, uh, was called by God to go to Moriah. Now, Moriah, and, and biblical names and names mean everything. A, a good name was better to be desired than riches and gold and everything else. So when God uses names, they're significant. Moriah means can be seen of God or the place God has seen, all right? Which means that it's an appointed place. God looked and saw the place. He wanted Abraham to be, and that's where he spoke, and that's where Abraham went. So uh, it said, it came to pass after these things that God did tempt or test Abraham and said unto him, Abraham. Now, wouldn't you just love on a regular basis to hear God just speak your name? Yes. I mean, that's awesome. Yeah. you got to remember, Abraham did not have the indwelling spirit of God. The Holy Ghost had not yet been given. He was in a working external relationship with God, and he had his senses trained so well, he could hear the voice of God. That's pretty job going good right there. Amen? So he said to him, Abraham, and Abraham's logical answer was, Behold, here I am. Or, and today, well, you won't, Lord, this is me, you know. He says, Here I am. So two very important things there. We need to be able to hear the voice of God. And second thing is, we need to respond to the voice of God. Amen? Intelligently. We don't wait to see what other, if he says, you know, if he says, uh, Alice, you said, yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. It doesn't matter where you are. It's just if he says, calls your name out, it's time to respond. So two things. One, we need to have our ear trained to hear the voice of God. The second thing is we need to have our person trained to respond to that voice of God. Now, Abraham had already, as we discussed, had a long working experience with God. Already. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son, Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah. Thy son, thy only son. Now he had Ishmael too. But I want you to know Ishmael was not recognized by God. God did bless Ishmael. Uh, that's where all the Arab nations came from, was Ishmael. Saudi Arabia, Iraq, all these others, that's all out of Ishmael. And what we're seeing here is he, God says, take now Isaac, your son, your only son, the only one I'm going to bless, the only one I'm going to recognize, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah. And the Moriah is the place that God has seen, right? Yeah. And offer him there for a burnt offering. Now, that would kind of get your attention, wouldn't it? Yes. I mean, it, it's amazing to me that Christians today think God will not call you to sacrifice things you love. Now, I'm not talking about human beings. But people say, well, I, can't, I don't think God would want me to give up this or give up that. Yes, he does. It's like, well, he asked Abraham to give up his only begotten son, that was his only son he recognized, and he gave up his only begotten son. Absolutely. So what, what thing is it do you think that you're going to offer up that's even comparable? There's not a thing we possibly could. Giving up a job or giving up uh, you know, a relationship or giving up uh, other things that we think we have tied to and, and God's calling Abraham to give up the very thing God himself had determined he was going to give up. Amen? And that's why uh, Abraham's called the father of those who are in faith. Right? into the land of Brian, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee of. Now can you imagine that? You're, you're hearing God, and God's saying, just get yourself on over there. I'll tell you which mountain it is when you get there. Now that is an expectancy that most Christians don't have. Mm -hmm. An expectancy that not only did he hear God, he answered God, but he also then was in a position 
to where he heard God offer him something that if any person I know of would have heard God say that to them, that it's a get behind me, Satan. You understand what I'm saying? There's no way that, well, there's God would never ask me to do that. Well, he did here. Amen. A lot of times we don't want to let our kids go to the Lord. I'm not talking about killing them. I'm just saying turn them over and leave it alone. Just say, here, God, here it is. I, I can't do it. And God said, turn them over to me. Let me have them. Let me have them. Let me have them. Okay, Lord, here they are. Oh, wait, wait, Lord, wait, Lord. You see what I'm saying? It's a very difficult thing. Yeah. Or, or we'll give our finances over to the Lord. He said, just give them to me. Okay, Lord, I'll wait, Lord, wait. I, Lord, if you do that, then I'm not going to be able to do all this. Well, you don't need that, obviously. You see, what are we willing to give? Abraham not only was willing to offer his son or asked of God to offer his son, but there was an expectancy that when Abraham got out in the mountains, he was going to hear God again. Because God said, I'll tell you the mountain when you get out there. Amen? You ever had that happen? I've had it happen to me. Not out in the mountain like that. On things that pertains to this. But I've, I've had the Lord say, go over here and say this, and after you do, I'll tell you what else I'm going to say. Okay, Lord. And you do that. When I prophesy, when the Lord prophesies and speaks through me, when he tells me to call somebody, I don't have a clue most of the time. But I trust that what he is saying in me is going to come because why else would he say call them up there, right? Exactly. So you, you have to have that built in you. And that's from a relationship with God. Yeah. Abraham didn't just come out of the cornfield or something and, and start offering his son to God. This guy had 20, 30, 40 years with God already yeah. and he became the friend of God. And, and he had that relationship with God, and God knew his heart better than Abraham knew his own heart. And God knew, not because he was omniscient only, but he actually was able to demonstrate the heart of Abraham, the commitment that Abraham had to him. Now, most Christians today can't even commit to one Sunday service a week. Two hours a week, they can't commit to that. They can't commit to prayer time. This guy not only committed his whole life, but he committed his only son that he loved and was already grown. Mm -hmm. and you understand what I'm saying? I mean, there's a lot really. To, exactly. So he says, I want you to do all these things, and I'm counting because of our past experience. You're going to hear me when you get in the mountains, and I'll tell you which one to go to. What if you go to the wrong mountain? You're over here sacrificing your son. Look, and you see a ram tied up over on the other mountaintop. <sighs> Dang. Do you understand the precision yeah. that God had already worked out in Abraham's life to get him from where he was to where he wanted him to be? And everything that God was moving him to was so that he could bless Abraham. Amen. It wasn't because those things were evil or wicked. There was nothing wrong with Isaac. Uh -uh. God wanted Abraham to be pushed and tested to the limit that he could absolutely bless him and the blessing was warranted because of the relationship he had with God. Amen? And, and that's where he moves us to. God wants to move you out of your comfort zone. If, if you're comfortable in everything that you're doing, you're probably not walking the place where God wants you to be. Amen? Yeah. If you're walking in fear, I guarantee you you're not in the place God wants you to be. Yeah. Yeah. If you're walking in doubt or insecurity, you're not in the place God wants you to be. And I don't mean... A building, I mean in your relationship. Mm -hmm. That that relationship dictates a certain amount, amount of commitment and getting to know the one you're in a relationship with. Amen? If you've ever been in any kind of an intimate relationship with somebody, you didn't just meet them down to 7-Eleven and all of a sudden you knew everything about them. You knew what they loved, what they liked, and that you were in love with them, they were in love with you, and you build this in. No. Now, that intimacy grows. It builds. So here he says, in Genesis 22-3, after Abraham has this discourse with God, or God actually has it to Abraham, Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass, which was his donkey, right? Amen. So Abraham's responding. Look at that. Abraham rose up early in the morning. God speaks to him that night. So get your stuff together. Let's go to the mountain. Bring Isaac. Amen. And, and so here they are. We, we, we looked at all the things that that took for that to be able to be communicated to Abraham. So now we're seeing 
that Abraham didn't just hear it. Abraham's responding to the request of God. Amen? Now, a, a lot of times we will get, and, we, and, and with Christians it's different because you don't hear a voice booming from heaven. You could, but we got a voice booming from inside of us, and it's not really a boom. It's kind of a still, small voice. Where he says, you know, you shouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. Or you need to go do that. You know, I, phooey. You see, a lot of times we take the Holy Spirit and phooey him without him realizing this wasn't just some vague thought that come into our mind. Right. This was God mm -hmm. saying, it's better for you if you do that. Or it's better for you if you don't do that. Mm -hmm. So here's that wisdom of God. It's like saying, Abraham, get your stuff and get up to the mountain. And we basically would say no. <laughs> we go, fooey. I'm not going to take my kid up there. Are you kidding me? For a burnt offering? <laughs> Don't you have other things? You understand what I'm saying? We begin now, we're trying to negotiate right. with God. And God says, no, you know, obedience is better than the sacrifice. It's not the sacrifice, it's the obedience. That's what Abraham was demonstrating, obedience. And that's what God was looking in his life, was to see that he would be obedient. Because it takes obedience for there to be a manifestation of anything that comes from God. It takes obedience. A willing obedience. I mean, somebody could drag you by the hair of the head, screaming, kicking, scratching, whining, and snotting, and everything else to the place where you're supposed to do this thing, but God doesn't do that. He says, hey, I need you to go over there. I'll see you there. Amen? Amen. I need you to let go of that thing. I'll bless you. You need to do that thing. I'll bless you, right? So here he's, uh, Abraham's responding early in the morning. <coughs> Excuse me. and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and clave the wood for the burnt offering I'd, I'd have difficulty I'm just being honest with you how many of us are going to tie our kid and, and know that we're going we're preparing this trip for the sole purpose of offering our kid especially if it's your only kid you know what I mean Abraham didn't stagger for a second. Amen. He gets up. He goes about his business. Gets a couple of young men to come with him to help us. Gets the wood. Let's go do this thing. Woohoo! <laughs> I guarantee you he had them ears open. Any change of plans up there? No. Okay. <laughs> I'm going on. Right, any change now? No. Keep going. You understand? Yeah. He kept going. He was willing. But all of the things that it took, God didn't say bring two men, bring Isaac, and bring the wood. Abraham knew what it took to give God what it was he wanted. We need to have that knowledge in us too. When the Spirit of God speaks to you, it's not confusing. When, when God says do this, it's not confusing. If it was confusing, if God says, I want you to go over there and hug them and tell them you love them. There, there's nothing confusing about that, you know. And, and a lot of times when God is moving in us to release something that we've held so dearly and tried to protect and cherish, we want to hold on so, so tightly that a lot of times we find ourselves in opposition to God. And then when there's things that we want, we don't move. We think we need to be in direct line with that thing to be able to apprehend it. And God says, no. You know, sometimes the best way to the throne is through Bethlehem. Maybe it's not through the best motel. It might be through the little barn out back. It may not be in the best hospital in the land. Maybe out there in the hay and the brush with the, with the sheep. You see, God knows how to get you from where you are to where he wants you to be. We have to be willing to let him lead that. When you think and begin to presume to know the mind of God and the direction and the pattern that God has to take you to get you where you want, you're misled already. You haven't even left yet, and you're already lost. It's a matter of letting the Spirit of God lead you step by step. I, a lot of times when I minister to people, God tells me to tell them it's a journey. 
And if you hear it come out of me that it's a journey, what that means is God's saying, I'm going to lead them along the way. Amen. You may go by Corbin, but you may end up in Somerset. And then you think you're going to stay in Somerset. Next thing you know, you're on your way to Louisville. And then you're in Louisville. Well, how do I know? Where am I going? Just follow me day by day. Today I'll give you my voice. He told Abraham, Abraham go up there and uh, to offer your son as a burnt offering. Right? So he's leading him. And he's doing everything that it takes. Made all the preparations to do what? To do what God told him to do. Go offer your son as a... Go into the mountains. I'll tell you the mountain when you get there. Right? Offer your son Isaac as a burnt offering. So he took everything it would take to get him to the mountains and back. He took everything that God told him to do. It took wood and it took his son to do the burnt offering. So he took everything that it took to accomplish the purpose of God as far as he knew. He's on his way to do it. Obedience, right? Amen. And rose up and went unto the place which God had told him. I love that. I love that. Because sometimes God will say, come away with me. Yes. Just come and get quiet with me. And we think driving down the road is quiet. That's not quiet. Quiet means I want all your attention. I want your gas pedal foot focused on me. I want your brake pedal foot focused on me. I want your eyes that's watching the road on me. This isn't stuff you can do sitting in the midst of a crowd in the church fellowship. I want you alone with me. Yeah, but I've got then get babysitters or take time off. You got vacation time, whatever it is. You need to get along with men. You understand? See, if God says I want you alone, we need to know what it's going to take to make that happen and do it. Amen. God says I want you to pray three times a day. You know what it's going to take to make that happen. Make it happen. Amen. And, and there's so many other things that God leads, guides, and directs us into that we need to not start making excuses as to why we can't, but we need to start making provision so that we can. Amen? Amen. Then on the third day, third day sound familiar? Yes. There's a lot of types and shadows hidden in everything God does. Amen? On the third day, they're out there. They've left. They're going into the mountains. And, and here God is demonstrating what someone who's not even born again can do when they're being led by God. Are you with me? Yes. Very important because Christianity has been sold all of this jargon that pretty much makes them lower than the animals. The animals hear God every day. It's like, well, you can't hear God. You would not believe the ministers I've talked to that last time they heard God was when they got called in the ministry. I was like, what? How do you minister? What do you, what do you speak? Who's speaking out of you, dude? You know what I mean? It's like, what's coming forward? And, and then you begin realizing it's just what they got out of Reader's Digest or what they learned in the seminary or, or what they heard somebody else speak. It's just learned stuff. There, there's nothing about what God is saying. Well, Abraham demonstrated and God demonstrated to Abraham who wasn't born again that you can not only hear God but you can obey God and you can take things necessary for provision to go do something that never in your wildest mind would you ever think about doing I guarantee you Abraham wasn't sitting around saying hey you know what God I got one for you I'll offer my son if you'll offer your son I'll offer my son but when I get ready to offer mine let's pull him back None of that was negotiated. God's communicating to him and showing and demonstrating through him his willingness to please God. That obedience was better than the sacrifice itself. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass. Stay here with the provisions. Right? Now notice... Do you remember there were times when Jesus prayed for somebody, he run the others out of the room, even the parents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Why do you think that happened? If they were not in the heart and the mind of God, it could hinder the purpose of God. 
These two young men go along. They may not have the same mindset Abraham's got. Abraham's getting ready with a knife and the two young men done got theirs. You understand what I'm saying? So when God calls you to do something, you need to be aware of those that will and those that won't. The things you actually need to carry out the plan and the purpose of God and the things that could be a hindrance to you. Because a lot of times we want to pack them along. We feel more comfortable, more safe. They can do things. Or all these different things, and they may be the very thing keeping you from fulfilling the purpose and the plan of God. Exactly. Leave them behind. Move on. Amen? You're going to go accomplish the purpose of God. They'll be there when you get back. I've got family. I've tried to run them off. They're there. You can't get rid of them. They'll be there when you come back, I guarantee you. And they're going to be hungry like little birds. Feed me, you know. You, there's things that we think we have to have and we don't have. We are not their savior. We are not their sustenance. We are not all the things that they have to have. And sometimes if you're realizing the hinder, that the obedience of God in your life is hindered, it may be, just maybe, you need to let something behind. Leave it behind. Amen. Go and accomplish the purpose of God. And then, and then you'll be able to address that thing. But what, what is more important to you in your life, being able to maintain uh, a certain way of life with individuals or things, or etc., or to fulfill the pleasure of your Father? Amen. Amen? Does it come down to that? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, we could stay in mainline religion dressed with our little three-piece suits and all the other things. But the problem is, what you have to sacrifice is the truth. Yeah. It ain't worth it. Do you understand what I'm saying? Abraham had to go do the thing of God, and in order to do that, he had to leave the ones that he chose, hand-chose, for this incredible event in his life. I guarantee he took the two most precious and the closest to his being. But you know what? He was not going to trust obedience to God even with them. They had to rely upon him and him alone. And that's where you're going to find yourself when it comes down to doing what God wants to do in your life or through your life comes down to you. You can't say, well, Alice, I wanted Alice to do this, but she wouldn't do it. <laughs> right? Well, I expected the church to recognize me and they never even knew I existed. <laughs> oh, well, that, that's excusable. No wonder you couldn't fulfill your purpose. No. It's not excusable. There's no excuse. If God tells you to do something, He already knows full well you're able to do it. Amen. He'll never ask you to do something you can't do. You would not believe the number of ministers over the years that would come up and say, God's called me to preach. God's called me to preach. I need to find a church. And the Lord would say, tell them to find a street corner. That's right. And uh, this wasn't a rehearsed thing. When the Spirit said, go tell them to find a street corner or tell them to go into the place of their family. Tell them to go begin ministering right in their own household. Tell them to go here. Tell them to go there. And, and you know, you would not believe that probably 90% of them turned away disappointed and went back. You see, there's a difference in wanting to be recognized and, and wanting to have the limelight and actually obeying the call of God in your life. Amen? You would not believe the times I preach to trees just what God's saying in my heart. And I don't mean preach as a practice sermon. I'd be out there just blessing them trees. Do you know that you have limbs that can wave and praise God? I mean, Amen. just whatever would come up. And, and I mean, because when the word's in you, you can't keep it now. It has to come out. And I guarantee you there's been a lot of stuff come out of me nobody wanted to hear. And that's okay. <laughs> I, my dogs know stuff a lot of people don't. I've told them things now. <laughs> and Abraham said to his young men, Abide ye here with the ass or the donkey, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship. Amen. He didn't say, Hey guys, uh, I'm going to go up here, take this wood and this trusty knife, and I'm going to lay Abraham, I'm going to bind him and tie him up and lay him on the wood after I get a good, and get me a good fire going, and I'm going to kill him and I'm going to burn him and offer him to the Lord. He said, We're going to go worship. I'm going to tell you, it doesn't matter how close the trusted people you think are in your life. When it comes to the will of God, they don't need to know everything. Amen. 
Because you'll find out that they are all Job's friends. Mm -hmm. They'll start saying, well, now wait a second. You might want to think this through. Yes. Yes. Right? You ever hear that? Oh, all yeah. the, and, and not only will they may, maybe try to persuade you, now they're going to call your other friends. Do you know? Oh, yeah. Don't say nothing. I'm telling you this in confidence. You know? Do you know what Alice is going to do? Do you know what Teresa is going to do? You know? And... and they don't need to know everything God's told you to do. Just do it. Let them help you as far as you know they can help you. But when you know, if you have that voice and you say, don't tell them they won't understand, listen to that voice. Especially when it comes to accomplishing the, the purpose of God in your life. Especially if you're on a mission. They're three days out. They wasn't catching the next shuttle bus back. They're riding a donkey, you know what I mean? So here they are out there, and, and Abraham is wise enough to say, of these two that he trusted the most, stay here. Amen. Amen? So when he did, he knew they did not need to know what was going to take place on that mountain. That's between him and God. If God tells you to go lay hands on somebody and they get healed, you don't have to go to, oh, I prayed for ten people. No. You know what matters? Is God healed them? Wow. It doesn't matter who did the prayer. Right. Amen? You see, if, if God's sending you to go up to the hospital and find somebody sitting in a wheelchair on the third floor talking to themselves, and you're going to speak to them and the right mind's going to come back into God, there is a praise and a, and a celebration of that into God. But you don't need to tell everybody where you're going because the demons will beat you there by 20 minutes. Amen. And they'll have somebody pushing them out of the hall. I think a lot of times people have, have opened their mouth up to the plan of God and the enemy was over here overthrowing the plan before they could ever get there and then they got there. Well, I guess it wasn't God. Oh, really? Well, who all did you share this mission with before you went? Because I know a little guy that sits in the darkness who hears while Christians don't know what to be quiet about. Just go carry out the obedience and let God be glorified. Amen. Amen. You don't have to have a parade. I'm going. See ya. You know. I'll be back and I'll be carrying all these souls with me. No. It's not what it's about. It's about obedience. It's between you and Him. Amen. It's very difficult a lot of times when you feel like you're so close to somebody you can tell them anything. No matter how close you are, you can't tell them anything. You tell them what God says to tell them. Amen? God didn't just, on the first day he met Abraham, oh, you're the best thing I've seen since Noah. We're, we're, I want you to go up in that mountain and offer your son to me. You know what Abraham would have done? Run away. He would have went the other way. And his family would have killed him. You're not going to believe what I heard today. Could you imagine that speech to your family? All right, sit down. It's going to be hard to listen to this one. But God told me to take my kid up there and offer him as a burnt offering. You think the whole family's going to go, yay! No. It's the same thing. It's more subtle. It's not as dramatic as that event. But if you're wanting to set yourself aside to fast or to pray or to learn how to hear his voice better, you don't have to tell everybody. Just do it. Amen. Because the very instant you're informing them, you're informing the other side. Wow. Yeah. And you're empowering and arming them to try to hinder you from doing the very thing you believe is the heart of God for you right then. So there, this example is a very important example that Abraham went through that we need to glean as much as we possibly can on how he got to where he got to. Amen? And then there's, then there's a bonus at the end of that, which I love. Amen? Amen? I and the lad will go yonder and worship. That obedience, guess what? What he was going to do, that was worshiping God. And then, oh yeah, we'll come back. We will come and, and come again to me and the boy, or the lad, will go yonder and worship and come again to you. Now, when you start thinking that, you're going to know, wait a minute, Abraham, come on. God already told you you're going to offer him as a burnt offering. And now 
You're, are you lying to these guys? Me and the lad will come again? Well, he knew something very important. He had already heard the word of the Lord in his life. Yes. He had already heard the word of the Lord. That he would be the father of many nations, and he only had one son that was recognized by God. And that promised son, who was going to be the one who was going to be the chosen seed, is the one God told him to offer. But he knew God well enough to know that God had a plan that Abraham had no clue of. But something would happen, but he knew in order for the word of God to be fulfilled in his life, that boy had to live. Whatever it took. If he come walking out of the fire like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, unbound. He didn't know. All he knew was, he's coming back with me. Praise God. Amen? Amen. And you see, he didn't, he didn't just say, now Lord, I've done thought this through in my mind. No, he went the three-day journey. He took the boys. He took every. He did it all, and he's going to go through obedience. He's going to go through that whole thing because he knows that's what God told him to do. But inside of him, he's warring a good warfare according to the word that has already went forth upon him. Amen. You remember Paul told him to do that: war a good warfare. According to that prophetic word, those things have been released in your life. What you know God's already said to you, there's nothing He's going to do that's going to counter that. If God said it, He'll do it. Amen? Amen. Genesis 22, 6, And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son. Now, it's, 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 it's wide open now. Amen? Now it doesn't mean he stretches his son. You don't put the wood on top and burn them down. The wood goes underneath. You understand what I'm saying? What he's saying is he gave Isaac the wood. Here, Isaac, here's the wood. Go get ready. Guess what they did to Jesus? Here's the wood. You see, there's incredible typology in this thing. There's, mm -hmm. there's all kinds of incredible things, which tells you there's more to it than him going to the mountain and putting his son there and raising a knife and, and things happening. There's more to that, and we need to see what's going on in that. And that is that the wood was the burden of the earth that was going to consume the sacrifice. Well, sometimes God's going to say, Teresa, you carry this. But Lord, it's heavy. No, I wouldn't have told you to carry it if you couldn't carry it. Amen? But this is the very thing that's going to consume me. Yep. You good with that? Yep. That's what you want. So be it. Do you understand? Yeah. Let it happen, Lord. Well, I ain't that right, God. Let it happen, Captain. <laughs> <laughs> Just do it, Lord. What are we going to do? Do me, do. Let's do this thing. And and we understand that that Jesus didn't just flip that cross up on one shoulder and he's dancing down the street. It was breaking him down. It was heavy. Amen. So much so that he fell in the street and they had another one come and carry it for him. You see, that was God's provision. Well, he's saying here and showing that the wood carrier, the thing that's going to be lit, that's going to, that's going to uh, cause the sacrifice and the worship to be done, the burnt offering, you're going to carry that part. He's not carrying that. He gave it to you. He said, you carry this. Amen. When we get there, I want you to have this. Make sure you have this. It'll, it's needed. Whether you can say it's faith, or whether it's hope, whether it's joy, whether it's peace, whether it's obedience, he said, you carry this and get it there, and it still needs to be lightable. Amen? All right. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife. Amen? Everything's coming together. You think about it. He didn't have a butane lighter. He's carried fire and a knife. Amen? Now, what is sharper than any two-edged sword? What is a dagger? The Word of God. And the fire of God is the Spirit. He are you with me? Yes. He had the Spirit and he had the Word, symbolically. Abraham didn't know that. He was carrying fire and a knife. We look back and understand what it is. But you have to have those two elements to be able to accomplish the purpose of God. If you go out there without either of those two, you're coming back disappointed. Amen. 
you got to have both. Abraham didn't know that it was the spirit and the word. He just did took the fire and the knife. And he's over there to do and accomplish what it was that God wanted him to do. And he's already got Isaac ready. So it says here he took the fire in his hand and a knife and they went both of them together. Can you imagine Isaac? I love God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, Dad, you're so awesome. This is such a beautiful place out here. You know, I'm sure there's some father and son chat going on. And you get up there and, and the obvious thing happens. Isaac's bacon said, Father, he said, here I am, son. Yeah, what, what's going on? What's happening? Very casual. Like I said, you got to be able to hear, right? He said, I'm here, my son. And he said, I, I see the fire in the wood. Right? The fire in the wood. I love that. The thing recognizes, you see, Isaac is the sacrifice. He said, I see the Spirit and the Word. I see it. You see, the chosen one. Ishmael would have never saw it. Ishmael had been screaming and running through the woods. Abraham had been trying to shoot him down with a bow and arrow or something. But Isaac, Isaac knows what's happening. He sees something, something's going on. He didn't run up. Do you possibly think in your wildest dreams Abraham could have run Isaac down if he took off? There's no way. You see, not only was there a relationship between Abraham and God, there's one between Abraham and Isaac. And there's also one between Isaac and God. Are you with me? It's very important to realize here that the thing in your life also needs to be in a communication with God. That those, when they come together, there's a unity and there's a oneness, there's a harmony. So Abraham's brought everything that God said to bring. Isaac's picked up on it and said, I see the fire. I know the Spirit's in this. And I see, well, I see the wood. And he said that I understand that that's the consumable. That's the thing that we use. In this case, the fire would be obedience. And, he, and the wood would be. And he said, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? <coughs> Good question. Amen. Where is the lamb? In other words, he understood we need a lamb. But you know what? This question wasn't asked when they left Moriah. It wasn't, it wasn't there when, when they're going out through the, the three-day journey. Where, where's the lamb? It wasn't there when they left the two people that they brought with them there with the donkey and, and the supplies. They're out there. There's no Walmart. You know, there's no feed store. You're not going to go out here and find, you know, some cattle auction or something like that. This was something that he meant to. You know what? He trusted his father enough to know that his father knew what it took to get everything done and accomplished. You see, Abraham had already earned that honor and that respect from his father, uh, from his son. Amen? Amen. Now that, that points directly to a relationship between us and the Lord. But also those who really honor you, they're not going to challenge your, your decision. They're not, gonna, they're not going to uh, try to question you and your obedience to God. Are you with me? Yeah. They, they will stand with you and they'll support you. Like I said, you don't tell them everything anyway. Yeah. If they were to know everything, God would have told them. Amen? So we have to understand that the limitations are based upon the understanding or the ability to hear the Spirit and to know the living Word. I, I, could, I could stand 50 people I know right here that could quote Scripture after Scripture until we fell over. But I don't trust them because they have an intellectual knowledge of the Scriptures and not a revelation knowledge of the living word. Amen. Big difference. Amen? Amen? So you've got to watch out. Just because somebody appears to be religious or appears to be uh, in a relationship with God doesn't mean they're hearing him and doesn't mean they understand what he says if they do hear him. Amen? Amen. So be very careful in those things. But where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Beautiful question. Beautiful thing. And... and <laughs> I mean, I just can't imagine as, as a father knowing your son 
honors you, loves you, is obedient to you, and carried it to this place. Now he's asking you a very direct question. Where's the lamb? I mean, like I said, there's no cattle auction taking place. They're not gonna, the boys aren't bringing it from, they're just sitting back there with, with the donkey. It took them three days to get in there. They, he's got the fire in one hand, the wood in the other, and the knife in the other. What's, what's going on here? I mean, where's the lamb? Obvious, legitimate question. So he goes further. And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. Prophetic again. Amen. We knew that the Father would, and that provision was Jesus. Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God. Abraham, I want you to look at the relationship God had with Abraham because this very clearly shows that Abraham was a prophet. There's no doubt about it. That Abraham had that ability to, to not only know but to foresee. He heard and understood. He, he may not have known completely what the, God was going to send his son born in a manger, born in Mary and all that stuff. All he knew was is that God had a plan and it included him offering Isaac as a burnt offering. Amen? So here he is standing there. His son asked him the legitimate question. We need something to sacrifice. And he says God will provide a sacrifice, right? God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. And they came to the place which God had told him of. He didn't tell the boys where he's going. He didn't tell the guys he left with the donkey. He left. Abraham knew where he was going. They didn't know where he was going. But he came to the place, right? He found it. He saw it. He went there. And I'm going to tell you, a lot of times it's hard. Think about it. Where, where is, if I asked you directly, where's the place God wants you to be in your life right now? If you could tell me, the obvious question would be, are you there? Amen? Where he's leading you from. Now, I'm not saying you've completed your journey. If you completed your journey, you're out of here. Amen? But there's a stop. Where, where are you now in that journey? Where, what is the point of location? What is the depth of revelation, knowledge, and understanding? What is the place in your being that God has you at now? What can God trust you with? Can he trust you with the word? If God gives you work, let's just say God calls Clyde out. He says, Clyde, man, <clears throat> I'm going to bless you, make you a father of many nations. Amen? God just out of nowhere says, Clyde, I'm going to make you a father of many nations. And your son, Rusty, is going to bear a son, and that son is going to um, change the world. Turn the world upside down. Clyde says, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Clyde's going throughout his life. All of a sudden, here's Rusty. Rusty's in jail. Rusty got him. Does that nullify what God told him? No. No way, shape, size, form, or fashion. The only one that can nullify that is Clyde. If, if Clyde aborts that and starts throwing against God you said starts blaming and accusing God now you're changing do you understand what I'm saying now you're changing the whole context and changing the whole atmosphere of that now will it stop the promise from coming no God's promise was really through Clyde but to Clyde's grandson the, the, the person to hit with it was Clyde's grandson just like the promise was made to Abraham but the one he was actually getting it to was Christ you understand what I'm saying? But here's the thing. How, how much different would Clyde's life be if he decided that because of the current events in his son's life, there's no way God was going to do what he said. It could wreck hell in Clyde's life. Clyde may leave the face of the earth wondering what's going on. You lied to me, God. Now, I, won't, I wouldn't want to take that into my face to face with the big guy. But the promise would keep going. Do you understand? Are you, with what God has said to you, are you still believing? When do you stop? 
You don't. Amen? Remember, that got Abraham in trouble when he went with Hagar. He got Ishmael. Thirteen years later, Isaac shows up. It wasn't like next year. Year after year after year after year. Could you imagine doing this part and then God says, that's not the one. And a matter of fact, now I don't want that bond woman to even be in the same place as the free woman. You see what I'm saying? Because now there's a 13 year period. Here comes this whole time period to where Isaac is going to come. But Abraham, 13 years prior, had already doubted to the part. And Sarah had to doubted it to the part that, go ahead and take my handmaid. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine turning your handmaid over to your husband? That took some doing. This wasn't like, I ah, go ahead. You know what I'm saying? So God understood that it didn't matter what the flesh was saying. It didn't matter that Sarah was 90 or whatever. It didn't matter that Abraham was old. It, it was irrelevant. And we need to make what the flesh is saying to us irrelevant. Amen. You just got to shut it down because it, you cannot let what you are seeing dictate on whether God can do what He said He was going to do. Amen. But way too often we do. We look at the circumstance and the circumstance will throw us into fear and worry and doubt and confusion and sorrow and burden down. And all that's telling us is, I don't believe what God said. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So they came to the place which God had told them of, and Abraham built an altar there. I, I noticed Isaac wasn't in on that. Isaac over there, this lamb, what about this lamb thing? <laughs> no. Abraham built the altar, laid the wood in order, Amen. Notice that when he got there, guess what? He's still obedient. He wasn't saying, no, God, come on, man. You know. He's willing. He doesn't know. He, he didn't go there to put on a good show. He went there to offer his son as a burnt offering. Yeah. It's very plain. It's obvious yeah. that when God told him what to do, from that moment, Abraham was willing to carry it through. And the reason he, he knew that he was going to be victorious even in offering his son as a burnt offering was because he believed without wavering the promise the Father made to him before that ever occurred. Amen? Amen. So Abraham got everything ready. Then he bound Isaac, his son. Man, I mean, my heart kind of flips at me to even think about that, that kind of obedience. You understand? Yeah. It's hard. Yeah. Well, God told me to give that car to that guy, but I don't think he'll take care of it. What? <laughs> Was that in your communication with the big guy? Mm -hmm. I thought he said, just give your car to him. What's your role in that then? You just give him a car. Right. Right. If he's pushing it down the road, rolls it over in the ditch up on his top. I said, well, praise God. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know he was going to do that, but you know what? It's irrelevant. You can't say, well, I wish I hadn't to give it to him. You know what you did? You just nullified your blessing. Mm -hmm. I wish I hadn't obeyed God. That's what it comes down to. Yeah. When we're helping somebody, I wish I hadn't done that. I should have never done that. Mm -hmm. Well, it's as if though you didn't. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Bound Isaac, his son, and laid him on the altar on the wood. I mean, I think Isaac kind of got a clue what's happening now. But I want you to notice the Isaac, the Isaac, he's not kicking, screaming, and running. He's laid out there. Well, let me tell you something between a father and a son. If you don't know it, everything God's telling me, I'm telling my son. Are you with me? Not just Billy, but Chris. I am passing on the things God's given me to them. I don't have to wonder if they're walking in perfect obedience to now. Amen. It's my responsibility to sow the seed. Amen. My Father will cause it. I feel that. Amen. My Father will cause it Hallelujah. to spring forth. 
It may look to others like it's a delay, but it will not delay because my Father will cause it to spring forth at the right time. Amen. It may not be flesh this time. People's observations is flesh. And their time, well, it should have happened by now. No, it shouldn't have. Why, how can you say that? Because if it should have, it would have. Because God's the one that said it would. So when it's time, you'll see it. And it won't delay because it ain't time till it shows up. <laughs> Hallelujah. I mean, we've got to get this into our head. God does not mealy mouth about the things that He tells us. If He tells you He's going to do something, it's not late. Ever. It'll show up when God decided to show up. Now, if He says it'll be there in two days and you're fourth day in, it wasn't God. Or you missed it somewhere else and want to stand on the wrong mountaintop. You see what I'm saying? We have to be that thoroughly persuaded that what God said He would do, that's what He will perform. Amen? Here we are, up on the altar. Well, guess what? Abraham knew it. He knew God would, would provide for himself a lamb. He said that right out of his mouth. Guess who believed him? Isaac. It's, it's, it's such a beautiful and awesome picture. Amen? Isaac believed him. How do I know? Because Abraham could have never caught him. He would have been like a deer running through there. Oh, you're going to be the sacrifice. Oh, come here, let me tie you up. You know, we've got to bind the sacrifice. He wasn't trying to deceive his son. Isaac knew. God will provide for himself a sacrifice. Isaac was okay with that. Amen? Pass down to those that God has entrusted into your care. Pass down to them the things that God is telling you to pass down. Like I said earlier, don't tell them everything on your purpose and your mission that God's got you on. They don't have to know all that. But they need to know our Father. They need to know that relationship with Him. They need to be able to engage Him. They need to have confidence that if a devil pops up in front of them, they can say, I bind you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Do you understand? That there, yes, there's a battle. Yes, there is a blessing. Amen? Yes, there is an obedience. Yes, there is a love. Yes, there is a joy. Yes, there is a peace. And yes, there is a burden. All of these things come. You might have to pack the wood. But guess what? At the end of that wood is a worship. Amen? Amen? Yeah, but it's breaking me down. Well, at the end, you're going to have the best worship you ever had. Amen. Hallelujah. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. Amen? Amen? Do you know that they wouldn't even take a tithe in the Old Testament unless the person giving it was willing? If they thought they had to pay it to God because they, they didn't want to upset God, they'd say, give it back to me. I don't want it. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. It's that type of a thing. So here, Abraham was willing to take that knife and plunge it through his son. I, I can't imagine that. It just it doesn't register in my mind. But you know what? Abraham had reached that. To hear God tell him that and to get to the point of doing that is something that most Christians have never ever fathomed in their wildest dreams to have that kind of a relationship with God. He wasn't born again. We are. He had an external manifestation of the Spirit of God. We have an internal one. For the most part, Abraham is an embarrassment to Christianity in the sense he embarrasses us because we are embarrassed because of his ability to hear, believe, and trust God. And here we are whining because we have to drive a 1992 Ford Pinto or something. You know what I mean? Or I, I've got to... I've got to work over this week. Or my hair just can't do a thing with it. Or do you know what they said to me? I went in there to try to be nice. And they got all upset and was cursing me. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> well, while you're running that through your mind, won't you take your only begotten son and go nail him to a cross? Whoa, whoa, wait, what? You see, we, we, we are not able... 
based upon the depth of our relationship with the Holy Ghost of God and the Christ of God and who we are and what we're capable of. We're not able to have relationship with that because we're not willing at this level. You see, he who will not deny his own life and deny mother and brother and sisters and daughters and all the other things is not worthy you understand? It's not that you have to do that. But you have to be willing to do that. Do right? you understand what I'm saying? If, if you think you are better to manage those things than God is, and you won't let them go and let God have them, then what you're finding out is that you're not ready for the depth of the relationship. God says you're going to rule and reign. Rule and reign. That he's given you authority over all the power of the enemy. So nothing by any means can harm you. Well, things are hurt me, Lord. I told you I gave you authority over the power of the enemy so that it couldn't hurt you. Use the authority and the power I gave you over the enemy and it will stop hurting you. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. So here we are. We're at the place. He takes it up. He's going to do the deal. Amen. Now, that appropriated into our life has, has an application. A lot of times we say, God, we will do something if that's what you want me to do. The thing is, is he probably doesn't want you to do it and told you to do it. Now you're negotiating. Are you sure that's what you What you were saying is, Lord, I don't want to do that. And the Lord said, I want you to do that. And you're saying, Lord, if that's really what you want me to do, you know I would do that. You know I would, Lord. <laughs> he says, no, I know you wouldn't. I know you wouldn't. And, and you know you wouldn't. That's why you're talking to me the way you're talking to me. <laughs> so he's going to do the deal. The angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven. I guarantee you, Abraham cried. I, I guarantee you. I feel like weeping now. Just thinking about being at that moment. I just can't imagine it. And then all of a sudden you hear that voice. That voice again that says, hold it. I mean, just to think, can you imagine? Hold it. Because in God's eyes, Abraham had already done it. Yes. He had already done it. You see, <laughs> you see, it's not necessarily that you have to turn that loved one over to God. Or that you have to give this over in obedience. You have to be fully persuaded and fully willing to do it. Now you may have to do it. But then again you may not. Either way, it doesn't matter. Your obedience is, is a worship to your God. Amen? And the angel of the Lord called to him out of heaven. Come on. No, he didn't say come on. I'm trying to get this thing. And said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here am I. That's, that's got to, had to have been a hard deal right there. And he said, lay not thy hand upon the lad. Amen. I mean, that's, to me, that's incredible. What Abraham was willing to do. And I know we've all heard the story, but we needed to look at it. We didn't hear it. You, you can hear stuff a thousand times and not really hear what it's saying. And realize... There's a greater depth. People say, well, I read 20 chapters today. And I said, you should have read one verse. <laughs> Just one. And heard what it said. And then two days later, you can read another verse. <laughs> to really comprehend the depth of what God did. And this, like I said, this story is leading up to the next session where we're going. And we need to see that what God was doing was not just for Abraham and definitely was not just for the nation of Israel or the children of Isaac or the grandchildren of Isaac or the descendants of Isaac. And we're going to look at that very thoroughly. But I want you to look at how obedient are you to God? Are you only willing until the actual circumstance happens that it has to be done? Where are you in your path and your journey with God? Do you even know? Because we need to know. Amen? All right, we're going to end this session. We're already into it. Father, I bless everyone under the sound of my voice. Lord, let these things sink into our hearing. Lord, we thank you. You are the only wise God. 
You are the true King of kings. You are a mighty God, our everlasting Father and Prince of Peace. Lord, you know the journey everybody in this place and everyone in the sound of my voice is on. And Lord, you know where we're at in that journey. And you know if we're going to reach the end of that journey. And when we get to the end, you're the only one that knows if we're going to offer to you the thing that we need to offer to you. But Lord, I just pray that by your grace, you empower, strengthen, and enable with mercy and grace and the joy that is in everyone and being obedient to their Father, Lord, to press us and move us towards being obedient to you in everything in our life, whether it be for us or our children or our parents or our spouses or our friends or our family or the church fellowship, our community, whatever it is, Lord, help us all to be obedient to what we know you have said to us and what you are saying to us in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah.